Okay, so I thought I'd record this because uh, it's hard to get a lot of good information on this fruit. And uh, Dean and DeLuca would recently put pawpaws in their store, and that's another weird, obscure fruit. And, uh, you know, so if that's this kind of thing is growing, I figure what's good for the goose is good for the gander, since I'm always looking for fruit like this. The more information out there, the better. These are medlars. They are, uh, okay, what did I write down? These are medlars. I got this from a tree in my backyard. They're in the apple family, and that's why they look, that's like the butt of an apple, but it's bigger on this fruit. Uh, it's a really weird, uh, really, r not rare, uh, obscure fruit lost in time. Uh, and the thing that it's known for is that it's weird because you have to let it ripen. You let it sit for like three, four weeks, or maybe even six weeks. And uh, from this hard stage, it sort of rots or ripens or whatever and, and gets mushy. And then when that happens, the flesh is like a dark purple brownish. And you'll cut it there with your finger, and then you can sort of unwrap it, unpeel it. And then the flesh you just, is just a mushy, it's almost like applesauce. And you eat the flesh like that and spit out the seeds. There's some, a couple of big seeds in there. Uh, not big, big, like, like apple seeds, but there's only a few. And yeah, it's known for being rotten before it's ripe. Uh, they call that process bletting. They just let them, they sit around and, and uh, blet is from, from a French word. Uh, yeah, these are from my tree. I got about four pounds, or from my two trees. Uh, so you have to let it blet. Uh, it's lost in time. Uh, it used to be more popular in Europe back when there were five people in every village and everybody died of dysentery, so it, nobody needed to ship anything far away or and tastes, you know, weren't for better things. Nobody had bananas, so you had to get as much stuff around you as possible. Um, it was uh, mentioned even in Romeo and Juliet, and it's mentioned a lot in old writings. Not a lot, but sometimes. And often used as a metaphor for child prostitution, oddly enough, because it's rotten before it's ripe. Uh, kind of a dark history there. Uh, because of the way this looks, it's known as col de chien in France, French, which means dog's ass. And it was also known as dog's ass in English, by the English. Uh, what else did I write down here? Oh, yeah, in, uh, my parents tell me that it was as gil in Farsi, and they had this in their country. My parents left by the 80s. They left around the revolution. They never went back to Iran, so there's your time scale there. Uh, so at some point, I mean, this was still popular. They knew what this was. I mean, I gave this to my uncle once. I ordered it from a place you can order them from, and my uncle's like, I hadn't had this in 30 years. Uh, so as Gil and Farsi, in Spanish and Italian, it will maybe be known as Nispero, which is also the word for loquat in their language. Loquat, so there could be some confusion there. The loquat is an orange sort of subtropical fruit, whereas this is not. Uh, so there's a confusion between those two. So in Italian or Spanish, it's Nispero or Nisper or whatever, something like that. Um, Another thing that people don't know about this, which is even more rare, it's already rare enough to know about what the hell this is, but what's even rare, uh, much more lost in time, the old English way of making jam was to not bled it, not let it get ripe, and this is hard right now, right? So since it's hard, it's not even a ripe fruit, it's full of pectin, it's a lot of tough fiber. And uh, if you boil it for three or four hours, just like a quince, or two or three hours, it'll turn red the tannins will break down, it'll turn red, and get that quince sort of taste, but uh, with a hint of bitterness to it. So that's worth trying. Uh, I may do that later and record that too. Um, but yeah, and obviously since it's got a lot of pectin, since it's hard at this stage, it makes a good jam. But you strain it all out and make a jelly instead. You don't want this fruit. This, the flesh is, is useless. Um, it can be ordered from Scott Farm in Dummerston, Vermont. Uh, they grow them. They sell them at about $8 a pound last time I ordered. Uh, One Green World, which actually just grows landscape trees, I guess they get the harvest from it and they sell these too. Uh, that's a company in Oregon. Um, uh, I think I looked up something, Honey Bear Ranch in California once. I don't know, wherever you can find them, you can get them maybe. I think you get them more in California where there are more Persians. Um, if I have time, I'll get my dad to write down as Gil and Farsi. I'll take a picture of that too and add that to the video. Uh... Okay, so this is now for the gardeners. Um, since it's in the apple family, it can be grafted on apple trees, pear trees, any, any sort of trees like that. It's very similar. 
the tree is very pretty and does look like a loquat tree, so it has a very stately look. Leaves aren't as thick and, and solid as a loquat's is with that nice circular whatever blossom look, but it, you know, a round look, but it, it, it still looks like that, sort of. They're, but the leaves are droopier, and uh, the flowers l actually smell like loquat flowers, which is what I find interesting. So even though, I mean, they say it's related closely to hawthorns, you know, like crab apples, I feel like maybe it's more related to, to the loquat tree, because the, the flowers and the look smells very similar. Um, it doesn't need to be thinned. It's a very easy tree. Yeah, that's a sort of easy tree to take care of. My tree actually has a disease. Um, I don't know, like all apple family stuff, maybe is, is going to be kind of susceptible to disease, even though this should be a nice climate for it. I don't know. Uh, but it can grow to, like, USDA Zone 4, I hear. Like, it can grow it all the way up to, like, upstate New York. Um, if you haven't bought obscure or exotic fruits or something like that by Sheldon Rich... No, Lee Reich? Unusual fruits for every... Gar Unusual fruits for everyday gardens by Lee Reich, I think. Some professor in Cornell. Um, you know, he mentions them. He must have a tree up up there in that area. Oh, well, there they are. Uh, I guess I'll take a video of them bledded later so you can see the texture. Yeah. Okay, uh, making these videos is kind of annoying when you, because uh, you constantly forget to mention things uh, when you have a lot of information you need to give out. But uh, I guess we should have mentioned the season. Um, yeah, these blossom in spring and then they ripen like apples into the autumn and you wait for them to be very easily pulled off the tree, like October, end of October, here in New Jersey. It's November 10th around now. No, it's not November 10th today, but um, I picked these a couple days ago. They were still on the tree, but they came off very easily. And they're still hard like this. And so they ripen for like four to six weeks. They, you know, turn soft. They bled, as I mentioned. And so it's like the last fruit of the year before the year's end. And that's what they were good for is you'd put them in the root cellar, and um, then you'd finally have fresh, you'd have fresh fruit last time in the winter, six weeks from then. So it's like, like you'd have them no end of November and in, into December, and they were, the, they were the, like the last thing available, which is what, kind of what they're good for. Um, also, you can make the jam. The jam will last forever if you do it right, obviously. Um, yeah, so that's the season. It's, it's a winter fruit uh, season. Probably going to remember something else and make another video, but yeah. Uh, anyway, okay, so here we are making some of the jam. Uh, I cut them up in pieces, obviously, so that to get to the flesh, to let the pe pectin out. But like I said, you can see it's solid white flesh on any of the uh, unripe ones. Uh, I picked out the unripe ones, and uh, fruit just naturally good for jelly because it's when it's unripe. Because I mean, it's like a really unripe fruit when it's unripe. It's just like a solid block, so it's full of pectin. Uh, just making a jam in the usual fashion. If you don't know how to make jam, that's a different issue. Um, yeah, we'll see how it turns out in a couple hours. It should turn red. Okay, you can see it's starting to turn more red. It's been maybe an hour and a half. Oh yeah, that's definitely darker from before. I just looked at the old video, the video I took just before. It's definitely darker. It's definitely getting red. Just like quince. And uh, it's for the same reason as quince, that is, tannins break down uh, with oxygen, they get exposed to the oxygen, and uh, they break down into smaller molecules, which I guess in, are apparently red, and also have that weird quince flavor. Uh, and also I never mentioned, but the species name exactly of medlar is Mespillus germanicus, Mespillus germanica, something like that, if you want to look it up on Wikipedia or whatever. Okay, I'm drawing out this video too much. And so there it is in its finished form. Red. Just like quince, it turned red. After about three hours of cooking, I did this. Let's put it up to the light. Uh, there's the light. There, you can see it. It's all red inside there. Uh, it's still liquid, so it should set later. I think I'm going to put it in the fridge to get it to set quick. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's for jelly. Obviously, you don't want to eat any of the flesh because it's weird stuff. Strained it very well through a cheesecloth and a, and a sieve, a strainer. Um, yeah. Oh, I added uh, a little piece of nutmeg and a little bit of allspice. Uh, obviously, you have to add some lemon because it's a jam, um, which I did. Uh, so that's part of the flavor, too. 
just like there. There's the flavor. Oh, there's red. Turned red. Uh, last time I made it, which was years ago, when I ate a bunch of it, actually in the syrup form, it kind of made me, it gave me like the runs or something. I think there was something bad with those tannins or the or, or, or whatever is in there. Um, but we'll see how this goes out. Turns out, I think this is okay because this doesn't have. It had more of a bitter taste last time. Maybe I was getting more of the leaves or something in in the in the juice. I accidentally, I put too much stems and leaves or something. Um, that 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 happened. But uh, this should be okay. I'm get, I'm betting because it tastes just fine and then there's no bitter taste like it was last time. Um, yeah, but it doesn't smell much like quince. Uh, it's a sort of a I couldn't even describe the flavor. It's just a general fruity flavor. I don't know. I don't have strong taste, so um, it's like a dark. It's a fruity flavor, but a little deeper or darker, if you will. Yeah. Okay, so this is the finished jam. Uh, the only thing I needed to add is that for some reason it didn't set. Uh, I had to add pectin, and I added half a pack of pectin, and the pack said that it was for like five cups of jelly, and it still didn't set. So then I added the rest. So I had an entire packet of pectin. And now it's still kind of loose. This is fridge temperature. Um, maybe it's because I took it when it was hot and put it right in the fridge. Is is that the problem? Is the, the, does pectin not set that way? Do you have to let it like cool slowly? I don't know. It should have set. It's a rock hard fruit. Maybe it's just too much water I put compared, you know? Maybe you need more pectin for the same amount of water. But you'd think a white, rock hard, like totally unripe fruit would, would have plenty of pectin. But I don't know. That's weird. So yeah, that happened. So, um, but I eat it left and right, and it's not giving me any problems, and there's no bitterness, and it's not giving me the same runs as it did last time. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure it was last time I had that I had done it that it messed with my stomach. It was I had put leaves in there and stems. That's probably what it was. Uh, yeah. So that there it is. It might not set. I don't know why. Does anybody have a reason? No idea why.